To me, there is nothing more interesting than development. How is it that a newborn baby, a mere two years later, is speaking in sentences and running around the house? My interest is in what experiences affect the brain and its development. The basic architecture of the brain is laid down prenatally and it's to a great degree determined by genetics but after birth that whole blueprint can change depending on the experiences kids have. For many years I've been interested in the effects of trauma and deprivation on the development of young children. So we put together a research network in 1997 on early experience in brain development. At around that time we heard about institutions that existed in Romania in which infants were abandoned at birth or soon after birth and placed into institutions where they lived for many years. They were living in conditions what you would call neglect. What we wanted to do is we wanted to intervene. We wanted to make a difference in children's lives. In the very beginning, we designed what's called a randomized control trial, and the intervention was high-quality foster care. Now, there was no foster care to speak of in Bucharest when we started, so we had to create our own. We took half of those kids and placed them into foster homes and tracked their development over time and compared it to the development of the children who were being raised in the institutions. We assessed their cognitive abilities, their intellectual abilities, their social abilities, and their brain development. And we tracked them systematically over the course of the early years of their life until they were four and a half. We've also conducted follow-ups with the kids at age eight, age 12, and now age 16, which we're in the process of completing at this point. In terms of the big surprises, I was rather stunned at how profoundly impacted the children would be who grew up in institutions. I thought they might be a little behind other kids, but I had no idea how seriously impacted they would be. We were surprised by how responsive they were in many, many cases to being provided with adequate caregiving. The fact that, that children could be so compromised on the one hand and have such capacity for recovery once they were provided with what they needed was, was really important. Those findings, which we have published in a number of empirical papers have allowed people to begin to understand the harmful consequences of early adversity on children. Infants and young children need attention, they need love. Neglect is the single biggest form of child maltreatment in the United States and in most parts of the world. What we've done is developed a model for understanding what happens to children who are neglected from early in life. It's a great honor to receive this year's Ruane Prize with my colleagues, Chuck Nelson and Nathan Fox. We all like to hear that what we're doing is worthwhile and is maybe beneficial. The Ruane Prize means a lot to me because it validates the work that I have been doing over the last 20 plus years on the effects of adversity on the developing brain and behavior. It's an acknowledgement that this project was extremely important in making contributions not only for the millions of children around the world who are being raised in institutions, but really has policy implications for children in adversity everywhere, including right here in the United States.